Seems like it's that time again. Time for another mailbag. So first one up here says two times cable. Can't can barely see that because of my censorship there. So let's see what's inside here. There we go. So what these are, are regular uh, power supply connections to SATA power supply connections. Let's take a look. So what makes these so special, these go into um, computer power supply and this goes into a SATA connector, but this is different because this end here is actually what the end of your device. This is the uh, male version, I guess. And this here would accept the regular power cable from your power supply. And the goal with this is that you connect your SATA power and you can uh, plug it to your normal uh, powered device, like say an old CD-ROM or something. But what I need this for is I need to chop this end off and solder these onto a hard drive that a friend of mine has broken. So that's why I ordered this. I ordered two because you never know when you're working on something like this you could break something and these were only about uh, 60 cents uh, Canadian each so I figured why not uh, just order two and not risk it. Nothing much to see here but yeah pretty standard stuff. Let's go see the next one. Next up, this yellow envelope here. Um, the only indication we have is it says module times one. So let me just make sure I'm not cutting anything here. But just like this. And these are LED matrixes. Let's take a closer look. And yes, I am totally aware it is pronounced matrices, but matrixes sounds funnier. So I guess I went with that. So let's just open this up here, slightly zoomed in. So on a previous mailbag I've received uh, two individual panels of these, but these are a bit different. So these, I believe they come out, I don't know, not sure, maybe. Yeah they do, okay. So if you look on the back there are circuit boards here, and if I pull this out, I hope I don't regret pulling it out. Oh, here it comes. Urgh. Whoops. Oh, that bent. Well, managed to stab myself. And there's an extra connector in there. Where the heck did that come from? I guess it was over here. No idea. But anyways, I've bent the crap out of these. I'm going to bend them back, and this will probably be next to impossible to plug back into these turn pins here. But basically, what I wanted to show you was that there is a chip on here. Now I'm going to have to read the chip off to you. It's a Max 7219CWG1708. And this is basically a controller. So this will take, you can see here, VCC ground. Um, D in, CS, and clock. So data in, chip select, and clock. So this will use some sort of um, communication from an Arduino to actually display things on these matrices. They don't fit all that nicely together, but they do fit together. And I'm going to have uh, quite the chore trying to put this all back together. But yeah, this is pretty nice. I think while it's out, I might actually take the opportunity and see if this LED matrix is different than the ones I've got previously, because the pattern on the back sure looks different than the one I got. So yeah, we may have some fun with this. Nice. Let's go check out the other one. Actually, before moving on, I wanted to show you that it is a red LED matrix. Again, I found two random pins on the back and my meter and diode check, so it is they are red LEDs 
and I wanted to tell you that this was uh, four dollars and eighty cents Kentucky Stand Copex uh, for the whole lot. So four of these things, four of these chips, all the boards and the pins. I was just surprised that this was actually jammed underneath there. But yeah, wish me luck putting these back together. Next up we have this envelope here. Uh, the only indication we get is it says dice. I believe it's just a, a kit. Let's take a look. Um, yep, that's exactly it. Let's take a closer look at this. So this is a typical kit for a uh, cheap Chinese reseller. So you've got a single-sided load, through-hole components, um, you have here the CD4017. Um, not sure if that's a shift register or something like that. Also have a triple five timer to set the uh, pace. There's a tactile switch uh, over here. You got a couple transistors, a couple passives. Not much to it really. So here you have the five or sorry, the um, seven segments of a dice or of a die I guess so I'm not trolling you guys like the matrix matrices so you've got all the patterns possible one two um, three four five and six and that's basically it every time you click this button um, I think a random number is generated I don't think so I don't think it's particularly random but pseudo random numbers generated and you get the output on here so that should be pretty neat to put together it looks very simple probably make a nice uh, 30 minute video of just chatting it also comes with a circuit diagram and a list of components but that's not really that useful since everything's written on the silk screen so I guess that's pretty much it Next up is anybody's guess, because it says 2 RC part, I believe, that's what it says. 2, I don't know if the 2 is part of this number here, but RC part at the very least. Open this up. There's a little packing burrito in here. My knife's getting a little dull. I have been using the same blade for a long time. There we go. Let's take a closer look at this. So what these are, RC parts indeed, these are universal joints and they have different size openings on both ends so I think this is 3.17 mil. Let's take a look with this. Yeah, I think that's what it is. We're getting close there. I can't see them a little far away. You know, just over three mil. And the other end, I think is five mil. I don't remember what I ordered, to be frank. Um, yeah, it looks like four and a half mil. And they have set screws here. And the idea with this is if you have a drive shaft, like let's say if you have a ridiculous looking RC boat project, you could um, couple the drive shaft to the motor with just this. The set screws should stop them from backing out or from ending up in the in the water. And uh, yeah, this is a easy way to do mechanical coupling. So let's check how much I paid for this. So I paid two dollars and fifty cents Canadian for both of these. So about a dollar um, twenty-five a pop. Not too bad. If you were trying to make this at home, you would spend way more material and way more time than that. So that's pretty good. These are uh, added to my arsenal, and like always, instead of ordering one, I ordered two. Now, these are not the best, the most efficient way to transfer movement, because once it's kinked over quite a bit here, you don't really have that sort of the drive you need. You don't have the articulation you need. But if you're just going over a small corner, it's not too bad. So yeah, that's pretty neat. Let's just see what else. Let's see what else I got in the mail. Not quite sure what this is, but uh, 
It's a DKG000105, whatever that means. Slice this up here. I see. Well, there's five of them. Let's take a closer look. So what these are, they are micro switches, but more specifically than that, they are micro switches on a board with a cable, pre-debounced, uh, debouncing components are these passives here, for 3D printer end stops. So I did order some micro switches, oops, I shifted my entire table there. I did order some uh, micro switches for the 3D printer project to act as end stops, but um, these are so cheap. Uh, I paid three bucks for five of these, so 60 cents a pop. They are pre-debounced. They have these holes already integrated into them, so I can mount them, and they already have a huge length. This is uh, just over two feet of cable with the right connections for most 3D printers. And this is just a pre-built solution that is so quick and easy, I just couldn't say no. So three bucks basically for five of these, so that's great. And I could have faffed around and built my own mounting brackets, I could have ran these cables, you know, I, I have bulk wires, but man, 60 cents, especially since I'm going to be dicking around with the rest of the construction, the mechanical build alone, it's great to have something pre-done. This I can bolt straight to my rails, adjust them back and forth. Um, I got the premium kind too with the roller on here so when the head comes it doesn't touch this arm directly it'll just sort of kind of walk its way on top so yeah th great I think this is a great deal five of these for three bucks sign me up anytime and last but not least we have this one marked only diodes now looking back through my history I'm not sure I guess I did order some surface mount diodes, so maybe that's what they are. Um, I ordered Zeners, but I thought they had come in. I don't remember now. Let's take a look either way. Nope, that's exactly what they are. They are Zener diodes. Let's take a closer look at that. So allow me to attempt to explain what a Zener diode is. This here is a regular diode, not a Zener at all. Uh, this is the 1N4001. And if you see, there's that little silvery bit there. And if I put that silvery bit onto the positive, and I put this negative on the other side, and I set my meter to diode check, you'll see there's an OL, okay? And then when I flip this around, I will take my red, move it to that side, take my black, move it to that side, I get a 0.627 volt drop. That means that the current is coming in through the red, through the diode, and out the black, but in the process we are losing 0.628 or 629 of a volt. That's kind of what a diode does. Current can only go through one way, and you're going to lose a little bit of voltage on the way. So that means that current will flow this way as long as you have at least 0.631 volts in this case. It's changing a little bit because as this heats up minute amounts, these, these numbers will change a minute amount. Now the Zener diode, this is a completely unprepared uh, demonstration by the way and I'm probably not the best person to do said demonstration but here goes anyway so the Zener diode this one's a glass body so you'll see inside there's red and then there's a black cap so if I take the the black cap and I'll put the red on the black side just like how we started on this one with the silver band uh, no that's actually not what I wanted to do I want to put it the same way we had it the second time so like this so nothing changes here, okay? So the, the, the band is that way, same as this was. And so current comes in through this red, through the diode, and down through the black. So this is called the forward bias. 
It's more important when you're talking about zeners. And in the process, we lose 0 0.760 volts. That means as long as you have more than point, uh, 0 0.760 volts, then you'll be able to flow current this way. But zener diodes are used the other way. So I'm going to take this off. I'm going to put the black here. I'm going to put the red here. And now look at that. Now I have uh, 2.494 volts. And that means that current is actually flowing the other way. So it's actually going the opposite way, but we are dropping 2.495 volts through the zener. Now this is a, it says uh, 3V3 on the bag, so it should be a 3.3 volt uh, drop, but this is not exactly how you check zeners. This is how you check if they're good or not, but to check the actual value, you're going to have to run a power supply through, and you're going to have to measure the actual voltage drop here. So this is it. So the Zener diode works exactly like a regular diode, but when you reverse the current and bring it up to a certain voltage, it'll allow current to flow the opposite way, so the reverse bias. I hope I explained that well. I know it's not clear. I didn't really rehearse this, but that's how a Zener diode works. Now we'll use this to find voltage thresholds. For example, they use them in car alternators. When the alternator produces more than, I don't know, 14.8 volts, let's just say, the 14.8 volt Zener diode will allow conduction and it'll short the transistor, uh, it'll, it'll, it'll uh, feed a transistor, let's just say, put it that way, and it will turn off the power going to the alternator to stop it from creating too much charge. And then once, the, once you stop the charge, the level of charge goes down far enough so that the zener diode reblocks, and then the other transistor is active and it turns on the power going to the alternator. This is all convoluted, I know, I'm sorry, I ramble, but this is how a zener diode works. So I got uh, 270 zener diodes and it's important to get a lot. I've got 27 different values and they're half watt rated and that cost me four bucks. So I can't wait to play with these things. These are building blocks that I think everyone should have. And this random assortment of stuff makes today's late night binge. Uh, I mean, mailbag video. And that's what I meant. Thanks for watching.